Hey everyone, Thaw Steve here with 1506 Metal Muscle. Here to talk about their amazing robot, pneumatics for their wrist or their robot, really unique intake, winners of Michigan State Championship. Really excited to walk through the robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. All right, Sarah, talk to me about your chassis. You said you had a pretty low center of gravity. Tell me more about that. Our low center of gravity helps us be able to get over the charge station very, very easily. As well as we have new swerve drives. Uh, we use the SDS swerve, or West Coast uh, swerve X's, uh, which allow us to be able to drive over the charge station very easily as well. We pride ourselves in uh, that we can be able to get over the charge station very easily. All right, so how much weight do you have? Do you have any weight in the middle for your center of gravity to be pretty low? Uh, yes, we put steel in the uh, the base the base of it right here, uh, and which allows us to keep that low center of gravity if we when we added weight to our intake uh, after our first two district competitions. So we have steel bars in uh, almost all four of these areas, as well as we have steel in our bumpers. How much does your robot weigh? 102 pounds. Oh wow. So we are a light, lighter bot. But still we're that low center of gravity. But we still have that low center of gravity. Amazing. All right, let's hand it off to you, Luke. Tell me about your intake. Seems like you guys are able to do two, both of the game pieces, a uh, cube here and cone here. Tell me more about it. Um, so this is our 20-second iteration of our intake. Wow. The best part is that it's super easy and super quick to like move around and use. So in this lower part right here, we can put our cubes in it. It's where we pick up cubes from the ground, and up here we can pick up cones from the single substation. So by using that, we are able to use our wrists to score. So by picking up game pieces, we it's easier to score them from like a high advantage. Are you able to demonstrate your cube and cone pickup? Okay, so for the cube, we actually pick that up from the ground, not from a substation or any pickup, so David, if you want to. Right here. So we go up, and it actually has perfect height to do that. Then we have to add this cube catcher in, which is multi-functioning, so cubes don't fly out the top. Nice. We also need to use it to, when we're going to single substation, for cones so they don't get into our cube slot. And now can we see with a, with a cone, does this guard do anything with the cone as well? Yeah, so if you drop that out, Josh. And then one of the other things that we have is we have multi we are using LEDs. When we select the LED, that detects um, what mode we're in. Right. I just assume it's, it's a, I also assume it's a good communication with the human player as well. Yeah. That's Very. really neat. All right, let's talk about this arm real quick. David, you're going to talk about your arm. Tell me more about it. You guys are using pneumatics. How well has it been going out for you and also your extension as well? Yeah, so with the pneumatics, the pneumatics allows us to have three set positions that we always know where the arm is going to be for our angle. So for transport, the arm comes all the way back and it extends both of our pneumatic pistons. We are now in frame perimeter and then we also know this is all the way up. And then if we, when we go to high ever, high. So now in high position, we have our large pneumatic on and our small pneumatics off. That allows the arm to be at a 38 degree angle to a 40 degree, which is the angle that we need for scoring. And then we have all preset uh, encoder counts for our arm. So that allows the extension to always be where we know. And every time we come back to transport, it hits our limit switch right here. And the limit switch allows us to always re-zero the arm. Nice. And so that way, if it ever comes out of balance, we know where it is. One big question I must ask, with the pneumatics being, the pistons being right in the middle, how stable are the pneumatics? Do you have any issues with like bent pistons or anything like that? So we had one issue before. We did bend one piston, and so then we upgraded to two pistons in the back. Okay. Before it was just a single, right. one's right next to each other, and now it is upgraded to two, all connected to a high-grade bolt. 
Nice. I mean, this center one as well it seems pretty thick. So yeah, the center one has not bent at all. Wow, that's really impressive. Now, talking about your presets, let's hand it over to Josh about your software. Tell me how those presets. How do you have them working together? How do you have them set up? Um, so our presets were so that we can extend our telescoping motor, so um, for our telescoping arm, so that we can score consistently um, in mid and on high. Um, because especially for the cones, not so much for the cues, but especially for the cones, we have to have them right on top of the post so that they can go in. Um, and this is what's especially true for our first intake uh, iteration without the hinge. So. Um, this was really a story of trial and error, right? Finding those presets and going and finding the motor and coder counts. And then once you're inside the code, it's really easy to just set the motor to, with the click of a button, set itself to that preset count. Right. But um, as David said earlier, we were worried that we would lose, that we would drift our encoder count during the course of a match. So this is why we added um, our, our uh, little button here so that every time we go back to transport mode, we uh, reset our encoder counts. And I assume that limit search has also been really hand handy for you, making sure to zero everything in. That's true, yeah. So, so we can be confident that we get that cone in every single time. Really impressive. Well, 1506, thank you for taking the time to walk us through your robot. Really impressive. Again, congratulations on the great success you've had in Michigan, and really excited to see what you guys do here in, at Worlds. So good luck to you guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.